left. Two oh seven Christ liveth in me. Far from God and dead in sin, no light my heart could see. But in God's word, the light I found, now Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. What a salvation this that Christ liveth in me as rays of light from yonder sun, the flowers of earth set free, so life and light and love came forth from Christ living in me. Christ liveth in me, Christ liveth in me, oh, what a salvation is that Christ liveth in me, as lives the flower within the sea, as in the cone, the tree. So praise the God of truth and grace, his spirit dwelleth in me. Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. Oh, what a salvation! That Christ lived in me with longing all my heart is filled that I can I may be as on the wondrous thought. 
Let's bow hearts in a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace with hearts of thanksgiving. Thanking you for our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanking you for the salvation we have through the shedding of his blood on Calvary's cross. We thank you too for the privilege and the blessing of being able to come together with those of like precious faith to gather around your word, to study your word. And as we do so, Heavenly Father, we pray for listening ears and believing hearts. And we pray when all is said and done, that it be to the glory and to the honor of your name and to our edification. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All righty. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Now, I heard someone recently use Hebrews chapter 2 to refute the idea that miracle signs and wonders have ceased. In fact, there was a conference just recently. I forgot where they were having it at. It's a grace conference. And they were dealing with the subject of cessation. Um, and there's, you know, people who have categorized those who believe miracle signs and wonders have ceased as being sensation, cessationists. Sensationists. Right. And I would, in fact, the reason I heard this guy yesterday, Brother Reggie, sent me a text asking me to listen to a little snapshot of the message mm -hmm. and uh, had a question about I don't know what he thought about the guy exactly but uh, he sensed some confusion on the guy's part and, uh, and indeed he was confused <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because he went to Hebrews chapter 2 to try to make the argument that miracle signs and wonders have not ceased, mm -hmm. that they are an active, ongoing part mm -hmm. of what God is doing today. In Hebrews chapter 2, beginning at verse 1 through 4, and of course you know we're studying Hebrews, mm -hmm. and uh, so he use this text. He says, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness. Hebrews 2 and verse 4. Okay. God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders, with divers' miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Um, so again, he takes this passage as a refutation of those who argue and teach that miracle signs and wonders have ceased. He sees in this passage the abiding or the continuation of such things. I'm not sure, well, I know why. Uh, one, he, he doesn't see the interruption right. of the last days of prophecy by the revelation of Jesus Christ to Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus. Now, if you look back at chapter one, I want to make this point real clear. God who at sundry time, verse 1, mm -hmm. and in divers manners, mm -hmm. spake in time past unto the fathers mm -hmm. 
by the prophets. Hath in these what? Last days spoken unto us by his son. So when you read the Hebrew writer, he sees a continuation of the days, Ursha then, with the ministry of John the Baptist and the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. He sees um, these days as a as as the present dispensation or as as a present time. Because what's the contrast? Time pass in these last days. Um, and so he would see in that, he, he would read into that, that we are living in the last days. Now the problem with that, again, he doesn't see the interruption of the last days of prophecy by the revelation of Jesus Christ to Saul of Tarsus. That's where why Romans to Philemon is inserted after the Gospels, after the Acts, but before Hebrews to Revelation. Because there's an interruption. There's a parenthetical insertion of something God had purpose to do before the foundation of the world. And at that point in time, Urshadim is hidden purpose. We call that the mystery age of the dispensation of grace. So that was his first problem. He failed to acknowledge, to recognize the interruption. He also confused or mistake the Pentecostal church with the church which is the body of Christ. So he looks at the day of Pentecost Again, and because he sees Pentecost as the beginning of this present time, you know, sits standing in contrast to the time past, these last days versus time past. He, with, without, you know, if you, you look at things that way, you can't help but interpret the church on the day of Pentecost as being the body of Christ. What other way can you interpret? What other way can you read it? But the thing that give, causes you to do that is where you fail to recognize that there's been a change in the program. Okay. Now he sees the last days as being a change from what? Quote, unquote. What's the two... What's the division in Scripture that the majority of denominationalism... Old Testament, Old Testament, New Testament. Testament. New Testament. Yeah. And so immediately, you know, when you talk about in these last days, they refer to the community of believers in the last days as the New Testament church. Yes. Did you say this was a, a grace teaching? No, no, no. Oh. There was a grace ministry having a topic or the theme of their conference was on cessation. cessation. But they were dealing with the, 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 the uh, that that. people who believe that. They, okay. You know, right. Okay. okay. Um, so what, so the, the, the second mistake that this brother made was, again, confusing or mistaking the church on the day of Pentecost to be the church, which is the body of Christ. Okay, that was his second mistake. And, uh, and thirdly, he just simply failed to acknowledge the scriptural teaching. I mean, just teaching in scripture about the cessation or about the ending of miracles, signs, and wonders. Now, we kind of ended up last week... Uh, beginning to talk about the Apostle Paul, the signs of an apostle. I want you to look at uh, 2 Corinthians 12. 
2 Corinthians chapter 12. And uh, let's start with verse 1. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. It's not profitable for me to do that. Mm -hmm. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Now, Paul is writing to the Corinthians. But if you remember at his conversion, or rather the, the Lord's communication to um, Ananias initially in chapter 9, Acts chapter 9, and Ananias had a vision of the Lord. And the Lord said to him, but the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he, Saul, is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. And then he says, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul rehearses that testimony once again. I'm just trying to remember now off the top of my head. We did. I don't know if it was 21. Right. Um, And I'm vaguely remembering mm -hmm. the Lord basically saying that he will visit Paul mm -hmm. yeah. on more than the initial occasion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just can't, I don't remember the words exactly. Yeah, I'm looking in 22. So let me see. I don't see it in 22. Okay, 26. Right. Yeah. Um, in verse 15, and I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet. Now watch what the Lord said. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things mm -hmm. which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will, I will appear unto thee. And so with that in mind, go back to 2 Corinthians 12. And so when he says there, I will come to visions and revelations mm -hmm. of the Lord. So we can see in Paul's early epistles, this was an ongoing thing mm -hmm. with the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul continues in verse 2, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, mm -hmm. whether in the body, I cannot tell, mm -hmm. or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God know it. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Now this 
was have said to have been around about Acts 14 when Paul was stoned to death in Lystra. And uh, would be the, 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 the corresponding passage in time is in Acts 14. But in verse 5 he says, Of such a one will I glory, yet not yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. For though I would dare to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation that was given to me of thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I sought the Lord thrice and that that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Am I become a fool in glory? Ye have compelled me. For I ought to have been commended of you. For in nothing am I behind your very chiefest apostle, though I be nothing. Truly the what? The signs of an apostle was wrought among you in all patience, in signs, in wonders, and mighty deeds. Now, I, I, the, 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 the theme of this section is the signs of an apostle. Now, I want you to go back, keep your place there. I want you to hold 2 Corinthians 12 there. I want you to go back to Matthew 10. Matthew chapter 10. Good evening, good evening. Matthew chapter 10. The signs of an apostle. Verse 1. And when he, Jesus, had called unto him twelve of the disciples, he gave them power against what? Unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Then in verse 2, now the names of the twelve apostles are these. So it, it, it's not a a stretch at all to acknowledge or to recognize, number one, the ones to whom he had given the power against unclean spirits to cast them out and heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease, mm -hmm. that that, pow that power given to them is referred to as the signs mm -hmm. of an apostle. Mm -hmm. That's what they are, miracles, mm -hmm. signs, and wonders. Those are the signs of an apostle. And that's what Jesus had appointed them to be in this. When he first commissioned them, he commissioned them as apostles. And he gave them the signs or the credentials, you know, to, uh, to, to validate their apostleship. And that consisted of of power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, that's important when you go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 when Paul says there in verse 11, for in nothing 
am I behind the very chiefest apostle, though I be nothing. Now, Paul is contrasting himself with who? With the chiefest apostle. Peter. Now, he doesn't, this, this is not the only time he's done that. He's done that before. For the contrast, now Peter stands, he called Peter the chiefest apostle, but Peter is representative of the twelve. Okay? But immediately, when, when you see things like this, it is to suggest to you, and more than suggest to you, that a contrast is being made between two different apostles, two different apostleship. They're not the same. But what they have in common, they have the sign of an apostle. Paul, it was a necessity for Paul to be given the signs of an apostle. Mm -hmm. One, well, get, um, I tell you, get Acts chapter 1. Keep your place in 2 Corinthians 12. We'll be back there. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 1. In chapter 1, um, Jesus is sent back up into heaven. And the 11 apostles began a process of replacing Judas. And that was necessary. Matthew 19, 28. Jesus said, Ye shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. With, that, with Judas having went out and hanged himself, there's only 11 apostles. So they've got to replace, they've got to restore the number to 12 before Pentecost, before the day of Pentecost. And they go through that process. The qualification for being that 12th apostle um, and by the way, if you look at verse 20, according to prophecy, Judas' replacement had to take place. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate mm -hmm. and let no man dwell therein and his bishopric let another take. Pastor Jordan likes to refer to that passage as showing that his title is the scripture. <laughs> bishopric. <laughs> <laughs> But notice what the qualification for being Judas' replacement is. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, of these men, now what men? If you look at verse 15, and in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120. Mm -hmm. Now that number of 120, Acts 1.15, that number of 120 are all men. I know people like to think of the upper room and they like to envision the combined company of men and women. Um, and of course they like to envision that what took place on the day of Pentecost, it, you know, was in, in, in included both men and women. But the text doesn't bear that out. We're just men. Okay. Um, so when he says in verse 21, he's re referring back 
to verse 15 to that 120. Wherefore, of these men which have company with us, now watch what the qualification is. All the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning where? From the baptism of John unto the same day that he, Jesus, was taken up, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Now immediately that negates Paul. Saul of Tarsus. It negates Saul of Tarsus, Paul, from being Judas' replacement. He doesn't qualify. To qualify to be Judas' replacement, you have to have been with Christ from his baptism. You have to have been present at the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist until the day, Acts chapter 1, in which he was taken up into heaven. That's not an arbitrary qualification, by the way. Get John chapter 15. John chapter 15 in verse 27. In John chapter 15, where we'll start at verse 16. No, I didn't mean 16, 26. John 15, 26 and 27. Mm -hmm. But when the Comforter is come, and we know he's looking ahead to Pentecost, mm -hmm. whom I will send unto you from the Father, mm -hmm. even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me, what? From the beginning. From the beginning, from the beginning of his baptism by John until the day in which he was taken up in Acts chapter 1 into heaven. So we got this contrast between a, another apostle or a different apostle from that of Peter as representative of the twelve. Now 2 Corinthians is, again 12 is important in that regard. But what 2 Corinthians 12 does is demonstrate that Paul though not one of the twelve, mm -hmm. is equally an apostle of Christ mm -hmm. because he has the signs mm -hmm. of an apostle. Mm -hmm. But it's not the same apostleship. Mm -hmm. It's a different apostleship. Go to Romans chapter 1. Keep your place in 2 Corinthians 12. I'm not done with that yet. So might as well keep that marked off. Romans chapter 1. Verse 1. Paul is servant of Jesus Christ. You see how he starts out. Paul is servant of Jesus Christ. Now without the book of Acts... The book of Romans would be a problem. Major problem. Because how do you jump from Peter to Paul? How do you jump from the twelve to Paul as an apostle? Of, as he says, as Paul, the servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. Well, when did that happen? Where did that happen? Why did that happen? Now that, that kind of helped you put the book of Acts in perspective. Mm -hmm. um, it explains the transition or the change from the twelve to Paul. 
And as you read Paul, of course, Paul talks about what? The dispensation of grace. Peter and the Twelve are talking about the dispensation of the kingdom, or you're still under the law. The kingdom, of course, is con compatible with the law program. It's not inconsistent. It's an advancement. It's, uh, it's, a, it's an intensifying of the law. But the principle is fundamentally the same. The introduction into the kingdom program. Do this and live. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. That kind of a thing. But he goes on here, he says, Paul, the servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Now, his calling is away from Jerusalem when he's called. He's on the road to Damascus. He's not a Jerusalem apostle. He's not one of the twelve. Mm -hmm. And everything God did in ordaining and appointing the Apostle Paul was to emphasize and to magnify the uniqueness of the uniqueness of this apostleship and the distinctiveness of his apostleship as being separate from that of the twelve. This is the Lord's doing to show that it's not the same, it's something different. But it required Paul to have the signs of an apostle. And, and if you remember, in 1 Corinthians 9, in verse 1, you remember the question Paul put to to, to the to the Corinthians, am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Right. Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? If I not if I be not an apostle unto others, yea, doubtless I am to you. <laughs> you remember in First Corinthians four. He said, though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers, for I have begotten you mm -hmm. through the gospel. Mm -hmm. Everything like that is, is, is putting in neon lights the uniqueness and the distinctiveness of Paul's apostleship. It's not the same as that of the 12. But he has given the signs of an apostle to, uh, to validate his unique and distinctive apostleship. And the signs of an apostle was, you know, the power to cast out unclean spirits, to heal all manner of sickness and disease. Um, let me kind of read the list a little bit more complete as it is written. He's given power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And you want to keep that in mind. But the signs of an apostle, that's what an apostle was given the power to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, go to 1 Corinthians 15 real quick. You know, because people like to take these passages that are actually contrasts of the twelve in Paul's apostleship and like to argue for the same apostleship. Mm -hmm. To argue that they had the same ministry and message. 
But Paul is not, you can't, if, if, if you, if it become clear to you from what I've shared with you thus far, Paul is making contrasts of differences, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not of sameness. Mm -hmm. Right. But they are take statements that Paul are using. He's an apostle. Mm -hmm. What is an apostle supposed to do? What's the signs of an apostle? Miracle signs and wonders, mm -hmm. healing all men who sick and so. So, in that sense, they're going to be what? Alike. They're not going to be different. Mm -hmm. Because what God is seeking to establish and to demonstrate that they, that the twelve, they are his apostle, mm -hmm. that Paul, that Paul is his apostle. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they are both apostles of Christ is not the same as saying they have the same apostleship. But the miracle signs and wonders was the signs of an apostle is how you prove that Paul is a legitimate apostle. Mm -hmm. And that would be necessary. Mm -hmm. That would be a, that's why such an emphasis throughout Paul's ministry of proving and demonstrating that he is an apostle of Christ. Mm -hmm. Whether anybody else believed it or not, the people that got saved by him, that was where he demonstrated that to them, and they believed because of that. Um, he says, no doubt, I'm your apostle, if nobody else. Right. And, and, and again, what does that say? That the people get saved by Paul, his ministry, are of a different community of believers mm -hmm. from that of those who saved by Paul. The twelve apostles. Amen. They're not of the same community. Okay, and Paul is drawing that distinction. But in First Corinthians fifteen, in verse eight, and last of all, he was seen of me also as of one what, born out of due time. For I am what, the least of the apostles. He's an apostle. Now people read that and think, okay, you got the twelve apostles and you got Paul. You just have apostles, the apostles of Christ. But they would lump them in one category. Now, you can lump them in one category in that sense, that they are both the apostles of Christ. Okay? And they, have, they both have the signs of an apostle. And by the way, what was the apostle to testify to after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ? What were they to be witnesses of? His resurrection. So, the twelve would bear witness to his resurrection, but also Paul would bear witness to it. And in that sense, there seems to be um, there, there is unanimity. Unanimity. Unanimity, oneness, <laughs> sameness. Okay. On that level, you're not going to find any difference. Okay. But he says, For I am the least of the apostles, yet he contrasts himself with him. That am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Again, there's, there's another distinction between the community of believers that 12 represented and the community of believers that Paul represented. Paul never persecuted the people who came to faith in Christ as a result of his ministry, the body of Christ. But he did persecute the community of believers under the 12 apostles' yeah. ministry and message. They're not the same. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Mm -hmm. And again, you see him contrasting. Why is that? You go through the book of Acts, by the way. 
<coughs> the book of Acts is divided up as outline Peter versus Paul in the book of Acts. Jerusalem versus Antioch. Okay? Amen. The things that Peter and them do in the early parts of the book of Acts Paul does the same but more powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, or how would I say, the, the attention is magnified to Paul's car corresponding miracles mm -hmm. to, to those in the, in the early part of the book of Acts. It's a contract. And then he says in verse 11, therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preach and so you believe. Mm -hmm. That's not an argument for saying that they preached, they had the same apostleship and they had the same ministry and message. That's, that verse is not proving that. Mm -hmm. It's proven that he's an apostle. Mm -hmm. That's what the verse is proving. Mm -hmm. No less than that of the twelve. Right. Mm -hmm but that his apostleship is fundamentally, radically different from that of the twelve. They were apostles of the circumcision. He is the apostle of the uncircumcision. I mean, that alone. He preached uh, the gospel of the uncircumcision. They were preaching the gospel of the circumcision. So you can't, use verses like that to say that they both preach the same. No, the, the passage is proving and demonstrating the uniqueness and the distinctiveness of Paul's apostleship. But because he's an apostle, they testify to the same facts, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. But the interpretation of those facts are different in Paul's preaching than that of the twelve. Okay, go back to um, 2 Corinthians 12. Now, I, 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 I'm bringing all of these points out because, again, Paul is given the signs of an apostle. Look at one other verse. Luke chapter 10, verse 9. Luke 10, in verse 9. And in that verse we read, well, let's start at verse 8. And into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, Christ commissioning the twelve, eat such things as are set before you. Now notice, and heal the sick, that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Again, the signs of an apostle. Heal the sick. Okay? Cast out devils. That kind of thing. The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Now, having shown what the signs of an apostle is about or about. I wanted to show that the signs of an apostle were withdrawn and they ceased and they ended in Paul's lifetime. Okay? They ceased, they ended Amen. in Paul's <clears throat> lifetime. And I have to remind you, 1 Corinthians 15, 8, and last of all, mm -hmm. he was seen of me. Okay? There were no other apostles like the twelve or like Paul since Paul. 
And last of all, he was seen of me. Now, the significance of that, anyone claiming to be an apostle of Christ, one, and it's easy for them to claim that they have seen him, because that's a very subjective thing. But the second part of that is not that easy to fake the signs of an apostle. Heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Okay? And I put the emphasis on all. No misfires. No, you didn't have enough faith. Because it wasn't about your faith. It was about him, that man, having the signs of an apostle and God validating, establishing his word by miracles, signs, and wonders followed. Okay. Um, and so the, 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 the argument against the presence of miracle signs and wonders today in the dispensation of grace is being made on the fact that the signs of an apostle and namely in this instance the signs of Paul's apostleship the signs cease they cease to be a part of this present dispensation in which you and I live in because there were no other apostles given. So when Paul was done, when God, and it was, and they ended before Paul died. But most certainly, once he died, the sign, only way you're going to have the signs of an apostle, you have to have an apostle. <laughs> and Paul said, and last of all, there were no other apostles like Paul. There were no other apostles like the twelve. Okay. Now, um, so how do we demonstrate that? Well, go to First Timothy chapter five and twenty-three. First Timothy chapter five and verse twenty-three. Drink Paul's instructions to Th Timothy about a sickness he had. What was Paul's words to Timothy about a sickness he had? Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmity. What happened to the signs of an apostle? What were the signs of an apostle healing all manner of right. sickness right. and disease. Why is Paul prescribing how would I define a medical remedy for Timothy's sickness instead of healing? Okay, It's a sign of the fact it's an indication of the fact that the signs of an apostle had been withdrawn. Mm -hmm. Look at Second um, Timothy chapter four and verse twenty. Second Timothy chapter four and verse twenty. Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Miletum sick. <coughs> Now this is the same apostle in the book of Acts. Send a little blessed handkerchief. Okay. And people get healed. You got a lot of charlatans mm -hmm. making hay on that <laughs> recording in the book. Because they can't do it, but they, they know people 
see it in the Bible. And because it's in the Bible, it must be true. I mean, you must be able to do it today. No. Second Timothy four twenty. Trophimus have I left at Miletum sick. What happened to the size of an apostle? Healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And by the way, in Matthew 10, they were also given the ability to what? To raise the dead. The signs of an apostle. Uh, look at uh, one last verse. Philippians 2.27. Philippians 2.27. I do have one more after this. I'm gonna, and I'll be kind of finished with this segment about the miracle signs and wonders. Yeah. Um, in verse 25, yet I suppose it necessary. To send to, to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants for he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that he had heard, ye had heard that he was, he had been sick. Mm -hmm. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death. But God had mercy on him. Well, what happened to the signs of an apostle? What happened to Paul healing all manner of sickness? And all, he was given the power to do that. But that's not what we read. He says, but God had mercy on him. Mm -hmm. And not on him only. I can tell you, this is not a, this is not a, a miraculous act. Mm -hmm. This is not a miracle mm -hmm. being performed on the path of Yeah, right, but he recovered. Right. There's no miracle there. Mm -hmm. But for indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him. And not on him only, but on me also, who only could just stand by and pray for the guy. But on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Now watch verse 28. He sends him back, but he sends him back the more what? Careful. Meaning, under guarded care. Yeah. He had recovered sufficiently enough to travel but needed to be watched. Mm -hmm. That when you see him again, you may rejoice and that I may be the less sorrowful. But again, it says, but God had mercy. What happened to the signs of an apostle? Paul, healing, having been given the power to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease, why didn't Paul just simply heal him? Because the signs of an apostle had been withdrawn. Okay? Now, the one last point, um, again, just a, a point about the contrast between Peter and Paul. Um, John 17, 6. Jesus says, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. That's a reference to the apostles, the twelve. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now, there's a lot more to be said about that. And um, But the, 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 the idea that I want you to pick up on, at least beginning with that verse, 
is that the Lord had 12 apostles. Mm -hmm. He had separated unto himself. Mm -hmm. He made them apostles, meaning that he sends them out under commission to do a work. He empowers them. But he does more than just simply empowers them. He keeps them. Mm -hmm. He keeps them. Um, Acts 4.33 Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. And again They have, an, as in 1 John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, but 1st John particularly, they have an anointing upon them. Yeah. And the Lord is not going to allow anything to happen to them beyond being persecuted. Okay? Beyond being afflicted. And even in that, there's the promise of being resurrected if they should be killed. Mm -hmm. There's the promise of being resurrected if they should be killed. Mm -hmm. But that's the only thing that they really had to concern themselves with or fear right. and didn't really have to fear that because he would raise them from the dead. But I guess the point I'm driving at here, they didn't have to worry about sickness. Okay? 433, with great power, gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace. With, you know, it's like Israel in the wilderness, 40 years in the wilderness. You don't read about um, and have to be careful I'm not so much careful but my reference point about Israel in the wilderness there was a period where there was no death but during that period there was no sickness there was no disease there was nothing I mean that was how God preserved it through that period of time and the only reason he allowed such things to come upon them because they didn't keep their part of the contract. They didn't keep the covenant. Mm -hmm. Like that, the 12 apostles had that kind of protection or anointing mm -hmm. upon themselves in the execution of their apostleship. Mm -hmm. And you don't read about any of them getting sick. And you don't read about any of them dying until the fall of Israel. Mm -hmm. In fact, they had the promise of the Lord. Some of them, the way it, the way it reads in Matthew 24, I think it is, shall not taste death to see the Son of Man come until he returns. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of promise or anointing they had upon their lives. The apostles. Now, that's who we're talking about. But go back to 2 Corinthians 12, real quick. From the beginning of Paul's apostleship, his calling. He was given a thorn in the flesh. He had an infirmity. From the beginning of his apostleship, of his calling. And he tells you the reason for it, lest I be exalted beyond measure that was given to me a thorn 
in the flesh. Now, I use that as a contrast. If you look at the nature and the characters of Paul's apostleship versus that of the twelve, mm -hmm. they're different. Mm -hmm. And that different is significant because it is, again, how we explain the absence of miracles, signs, mm -hmm. and one. They were not meant to be a part. They're not intended to endure throughout the, the dispensation of grace. Mm -hmm. And they prove that it, it proved the uniqueness and the distinctiveness of Paul's apostleship from that of the twelve. Mm -hmm. He prayed thrice to have it removed, and the Lord said, My grace mm -hmm. is sufficient for thee. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yeah, I'm convinced that our identity is going to be critical. It's going to be the key to everything going forward. Understanding sound doctrine, the doctrinal differences and distinctions. And it seems like overwhelmingly that's the problem out here. It's the lack of an immediate identification with Paul's gospel and ministry message. It's an identity crisis, in other words. And um, they seem to think that revivals are going to fix this problem. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and maybe not so much putting emphasis on the identity as it is just the change in the program. Mm -hmm. and then talking about who we are, yeah. the identity becomes mm -hmm. you know, kind of a, 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 a what do you call it, a baseline yeah. we're not mm -hmm. the kingdom church right. we are the body, the body of Christ mm -hmm. and people need to come to that persuasion to be fully persuaded of that if you don't, if you don't recognize a change in the program, mm -hmm. then the identity thing is up in the air. You, you don't know who you are. You just, you know, talk about the church on the day of Pentecost. Everybody think you're talking about the body of Christ. If you're talking about the body of Christ, everybody think you're talking about the church at, mm -hmm. at Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Any. No? no, no word from us, Sister Jan. Okay, she didn't call you back. Okay. Um, with regards to announcements. Um, this Saturday, Brother George would have his Bible study at 11 a.m. at 1142 East 67th Street. On the 14th, a week from this Saturday, will be the men's meeting. We meet at McDonald's at 8 a.m. for breakfast, and then we meet back down here at the church at 8.30. Um, did we get the, the uh, broadcast list, she said? Yeah. Okay. Um, other than that, I think, we had a busy month last month. Mm -hmm. So, kind of nice to have that. Yeah. yeah, I'll let you. But we do we, we do have a report on Sister Donna. Right. And, and updates since last Sunday, this past Sunday? Yeah, we went out to see her. Oh, good. Uh, she, she received guests. Was it Monday? Visitors. Monday. Monday. Was it Monday? Yeah. Yes. It was Monday. <laughs> Uh, but she's doing good. Um, looks a little frail. Um, good spirit. You know, the, the sister will say she's herself. You know, you get to talking with her, you immediately remember what you know about Sister Donna. Um, 
my question was why would why they still had you in there <laughs> and uh, so it's just for observation um, not being sure of what caused the, the fall what caused the blackout and uh, so they're just trying to make sure they covered all the bases um, she she'd be going to a rehab today she was supposed to be transferred to a rehab in Cicero and uh, so if we get word of where that's at tomorrow we're supposed to go out and see her on Thursday and uh, but other than that she's doing good she sends her greetings and we're just Ask that you pray, pray, pray for. And you won't wear masks up there. No. Okay. No. And um, once we have an address, you could probably start sending your cards, or if they have a phone in the room, mm -hmm. we could start calling you probably. But we'll we'll give you a signal on that. And we heard Sister Nettie had uh, the cast taken off of her arm. So that must be healing up pretty well. And my mom, she, she's doing good, just the problem with the legs still. And so she she's going to go and, and just have them scan again just to make sure nothing else has developed constantly in pain mm -hmm. uh, you know severe pain for the strong pain medication and, you know the doctors don't like prescribing mm -hmm. uh, the strong medication like that but you know she's in pain and so you know she, she let them know so. mm -hmm. <laughs> And I can tell you, you know, only you know what you what you feel. Yeah. yeah. So I I don't question that. Uh, I just worry about you know you know the problems that can come about because of such strong pain pain meds. And I think sometimes they put it off because they probably think. Maybe she just don't know how much pain she can endure, so we're gonna delay get the, gonna get the prescription and we'll put you know, and then you're waiting another several days before you can get your prescription filled. You know, they tell you if they send it in, then you have been waiting for it, then you call in, is it ready? No, we never send it in. They've done that to a couple of times. They, they, they really don't want to get it, you know, so I figure they just try to figure out ways to, mm -hmm. to delay it. Brother Bob? Are you all here in Tennessee? Catch old Pastor Jordan down in Tennessee? No. That's, that's coming up uh, this week. Yeah, that'd be down in Whitman Holler. Yeah, end of the month. Yeah. Right. In fact, he's supposed to be up in Wisconsin the end of this month. Yeah. Hmm. And then he'll be down in Kentucky. Yeah, I think those days are that same way. No, yeah, yeah, October in Tennessee. Uh, it Tennessee is for this month. Okay. It may be closed. This is October. Yeah. It may be closed because because he this is about the time of year he's, he's everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Pastor. We appreciate it. Uh, I was thinking when you were talking about people need to see that interruption. You know, uh, if, if you look at your Bible, you can see the interruption all over the place. Yes. I was looking here at Christ that interrupted Saul. That was the first interruption in saving. <laughs> when he couldn't really be saved under the old program. Right. Peter's diet was interrupted. Remember in Acts 10? You know, he's not here eating ham and eggs, bacon. Yeah. Ribs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
He had famous days. His diet was interrupted. Peter's message was interrupted. Remember, he started it. Probably saying, why did you keep this from us, Lord? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Peter started to preach his message, and his message was interrupted. And he was, and he was sent to a Gentile, which means his commission was interrupted. Because yeah. Israel hadn't accepted right. Right, everything. That everyone, they all had to be saved. Yeah. Interruptions all over the place. Interruptions all over the place. Um, uh, what else? Uh, that's a good observation. And even your, even your Bible put together Paul's message interrupting Israel as the king. It's all over the place. People are blind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but especially like, uh, this is just me, I just put my little notes uh, for me. Um, we talked about how, yeah, without the book of Acts, we, we could not make any sense of, uh, of the Bible law. Because how do you explain, like you said, going from Peter, and all of a sudden you're going from Peter to Paul, you know, going from the 12 to the 1. I mean, how, how did that come about? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and, and most, most of them would be the Gentile. Yeah. The yeah. ministry and message to the Gentile. Yeah. And you go from law to grace, you know. Paul talks about, you know, under law, you're under grace, Romans 16. I mean, if I was a Jew reading that, I'd say, holy smokes. Yeah. What's up with that? Mm -hmm. Right? You wouldn't be able to explain it. Go from circumcision to uncircumcision. So, uh, yeah, um, you have to pay close attention, but you have to have a good teacher, too, to help out. Because <laughs> you read these things and then you read into it, uh, which is nominations and telling you. So, you need to be under a proper uh, teacher as well. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Now, let's have a, a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for being you, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the one true living God of the universe. We thank you for that. We thank you for that simple gospel of salvation, the, the due time gospel that flows from the cross, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And each and every one of us that believes that fact and that fact alone results in our being baptized or identified into the body of Christ for the spiritual kingdom and the heavenly places that you're forming today. We thank you for that. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the Apostle Paul uh, and the concept of the right division that he has in his, in his epistles, which enables us to understand your will for today and how to keep a distinction between ourselves and the nation of Israel. And we thank you for that. Thank you for this Bible study. Thank you for the pastor and his family. And Trust that they will continue to teach and pray. Uh, use the word of God rightly, divide it, and share with us. And we trust that if something was said here today that impressed in our hearts that we will share with others so that as we are edified, we will be glorified. And we look forward to that in Christ's name. Amen.